Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another What I Eat in a Day video. Thank you so, so much for continuing to log on and join me for fantastic days of food, especially now. I know that it's a very uncertain time and getting out to get groceries is a bit of a challenge and inspiration can be lacking, everything like that, but I think it's a great time to focus on being creative in the kitchen. It's a real opportunity to get cooking. It's a real opportunity to minimize waste and I hope that you enjoy it and you continue to enjoy my videos full stop so yeah the morning was very very quick to be honest I got up did some yoga with the kids which is how we like to start our mornings at the minute we're trying to get a bit of a routine down so I wanted something nice and light just to get my body my body ready for exercise so I had a banana and a coffee I need to bake some bread so last night I mixed up some dough in hopes of for the first time making my own loaf of bread um, what I am missing in the supermarkets is finding sourdough, going to the fresh bakery and getting loaves of bread, rye bread, things like that. And as much as these are fine, I just don't really tend to eat them, to be honest. I don't enjoy them. I don't enjoy the taste, the texture. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and bake my own bread. I have a bit of flour in and I'm going to give it a whirl because if I can nail it, it will be absolutely fantastic for me. So that is the plan. It had proving overnight. I'm just about to do a second prove and then it'll go in the oven and hopefully for lunch, I'm gonna be having a grilled cheese and spring onion sandwich, which I'm very excited about. So let's just go and check on the dough. It's more than doubled in size. Um, it's huge, it's massive. Um, so what I'm going to do now is give it a second prove and this isn't going to be as long as the first one, but I think it's going to add a lot of flavour and make the dough really nice and rich. The plan is to get this dough out of the bowl, give it a little bit of a knead, and then I'm going to pop it into my loaf tin with um, a bit of oil in the base, just because I don't want it to stick. So I'm just going to knead it for a couple of minutes, and then what I'm going to do is pop it in my loaf tin, and I'm going to wring out a pot towel with some warm water and I'm going to let it sit on the top, keeping it nice and humid for about 40 minutes before I bake it. on just the light that's going to give a little bit of warmth and create a really nice cozy area for it to sit in for about 40 minutes and then i'll bake it okay google set my timer for 40 minutes the dough has had a second proof and it is come up really nicely. I've got really high hopes for this. I've just brushed it with a bit of oil um, and now I'm going to pop it into the oven at 200 degrees and let it bake. And I've sprinkled a tiny bit of rock salt on the top to give it texture. Feel free to leave that out. It doesn't call for it but I think it'll give it a nice crunch. So now that's done I'm going to pop it into the oven for about 35 minutes on the middle shelf at 200 degrees. Bread has come out of the oven. I'm so happy with it. It looks absolutely delicious. And considering this is my first time baking homemade bread, I'm so happy with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes. Whilst my bread is resting, I'm going to chop up some spring onions. These are looking like they really do need eating, so I'm about to chop those up. And I'm going to weigh out 30 grams worth of mature cheddar. You can use more, you can use less, it's completely optional, but I feel like a cheese sandwich needs a bit of cheese at least. And I'm also going to be using Lurpak. I don't point my butter, but feel free to do that. I'm going to track this bread as if it was sourdough. Um, so I'm going to weigh it out and track it as if I'd bought it from Tesco or Aldi or wherever else, M&S, I might get my bread from. Um, I can't, I, what I might do is when I have some time later, I might add the recipe to the um, app, figure out how many slices it is and give you guys an accurate reading, but obviously I'm not 100% sure, but for now, I'm going to start chopping up my veg. Ooh, it's impossible to ignore you. Spring onion is cut, as is my cheese. I have a little 
spice blend here. I have some smoked paprika that I've mixed in with some rock salt and some pepper. I think it will just add a nice smokiness to the cheese and it will complement the sweetness of the spring onion. So I'm going to get a bit of butter in my pan. Feel free to use calorie spray or, you know, fry light oil, that kind of thing if you should want to. And I also have my two slices of bread here that I'm going to lightly butter. I'm not going to put too much butter on there. I just want to give them a bit more crisp. But as you can see, they're quite crispy already. They just look absolutely delicious. I cannot believe that I've made this loaf, to be quite honest. I'm going to pop it in some brown paper and put the end back on to keep it as fresh as possible. Wrap it in some brown paper and secure it like this. to bake more bread it's just reignited a new side to my baking that I really want to try I'm going to start doing flavored bread I'm going to start doing um oil truffle oil bread and sourdough bread and rye bread like honestly feel excited guys because there's <laughs> some interesting recipes coming your way but I'll put the point value to that in the description box down below my bread equated to five points my cheese was three points which is eight points i don't track butter or oil but feel free to do that and obviously paprika and um, spring onion are free so not too much really even if you factored in the butter you know that would be fine you could use some of your weeklies if you feel like it's a bit indulgent and also feel free to use again fry light oil things like that you don't have to use butter like i did but i've just come in the kitchen the kids are sat on the couch just having a chill and i've just come and made a coffee and over the weekend Andrew and I whipped up some, I say Andrew and I, he washed up, I baked these, whipped up some Cupcake Gemma birthday cake cookies, which are basically really chunky, thick um, cookies that have dark chocolate in there, white chocolate, caramelised white chocolate, Jimmy sprinkles, and they're incredible. I literally just want a little bit to dunk in my coffee. So I'm going to have a quarter of one, which seems like nothing. I mean, I'm not even hungry. That sandwich really did fill me. It's just something sweet to dip in my coffee. It's kind of habit. So I'm going to track that at two points, just to be on the safe side. And I don't track my coffee, but for those of you that are wondering, it's the Nescafe sachets. I'll link them down below. I get them from Amazon every single time. So I'm going to enjoy that. And then by that time, Andrew should be home and we'll make the prep. I will start making the prep for dinner. It's a super simple one. Everything goes into one pot. And again, it's so flavorful, it's so easy to do, and it's great for kids, great for batch cooking, meal planning, entertaining. Not that a lot of us are doing much entertaining at the moment, but it's a great one for your archives for future meal parties and things like that. So I'm gonna go enjoy my cookie and I'll check back with you guys when we're ready to start dinner. with what I've done so again I'm making chicken pilaf I'm making it with skinless chicken breast which I've set aside here and all I've done so far is caramelize one onion some garlic and some ginger and that's reduced significantly and it's gone really sweet and delicious so now I'm going to move on to the next step for anyone who's wondering I use ghee I always use ghee I just like the texture and the taste that it gives 
So I have some peas here, some basmati rice, some chicken stock, some yogurt, and a very specific spice blend down here. Now, I'm going to pop this recipe in the description box. It's 10 points a serving because I've worked it all out on the WW app for you guys. So 10 points, absolutely delicious. So as I said, we've caramelised the ginger, garlic and onion. So now the next step is to... Next step is to now add our yoghurt. So I'm going to be using half of this tub. This is actually a 400 gram tub. So you need to use 200 grams, which is about half. I'm using lactose-free yoghurt. Again, I'm on maintenance, so I'm... What I've done is I've tracked it as fat-free Greek yogurt because I assume that's what a lot of you will be using. If you're not, of course, it will be slightly higher. But again, as I'm on maintenance, I'm not too fussed. But for you guys, I have done it on fat-free on the app to make it easier and obviously more point-friendly so your points go further. It's bad enough we get along, so just say goodnight and go. Now I'm going to add my spice blend. Again, all of this is in the description box down below for you guys go and check out. It's a very, very simple but traditional spice blend. Garam masala, chilli, um, turmeric. Next step is to now add our chicken straight in. So I'm going to cook this chicken down and once it's absorbed, majority of the yoghurt, I'm going to then add my rice and my stock. But I'll add my rice first and poke it, um, which is quite easy when I eat rice for me. Normally, I cook it separately and combine it, but this is a really traditional way of cooking a pilaf, so I want to keep things as traditional as possible. And I'm now going to add the final thing, which is the peas, and I'm going to bring this to the boil. And then once it's at the boil, I'm going to leave it for about two minutes, and then I'm going to take it to a low heat and let it sit and simmer for a good seven to ten minutes. That will allow the rice to cook, and then we are done. And it's going to be so delicious, so flavorful. I think you guys are really going to like it. that chicken pilaf guys oh my goodness a must try for sure i know i've mentioned it but, but for batch cooking meal planning feeding a larger family on a relatively small packet of chicken it's just such a fantastic idea and it lends itself very well to whatever veggies you have in your fridge you could put aubergine in there courgette carrot pepper the possibilities are absolutely endless so the washing machine is on i'm so sorry but i'm gonna end it here but thank you so much for watching i actually had seven to roll over but that can account for things like butter oil and things like that that i didn't track throughout the day i also didn't track my greek yogurt um so yeah i probably have just had a 28 point day and um, if you want to be more technical and accurate about things but again i'm on maintenance i'm not being too strict but i hope you've all enjoyed it i will pop my recipe for the homemade loaf of bread in the description box down below along with the chicken pilaf and the serving and what you need to make it but thank you so much for watching i better go because the kids are being uber noisy and i will see you in my next video Bye.